Hello and welcome to Weekly News Highlights with me, Hasina Momtaz. Here are your top stories for the week. On Saturday, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina thanked BNP Chairperson Khalid Azir for her support to the opposition candidates running for mayor in four city corporations this month. I thank the opposition leader for contesting in the polls for the four city corporations. I hope she will also participate in the next general elections, Hasina said at her official residence, Ganababan. She again made it clear that the opposition's demand for a non-party government system to oversee the parliamentary polls will not be accepted. The election will be held just like it is being held in other countries. The people are the ones who run this system. I will be here if people vote for me. If not, I won't be here, the Prime Minister said, hinting at a democratic transition without the need for a caretaker administration to ensure it. The next election is likely to be held under the present government in keeping with existing constitutional provisions which have purged the caretaker system through the 15th Amendment. The opposition, led by the BNP, has been out on the streets demanding a restoration of the caretaker system. But Sheikh Hasina wants the elections conducted by the Election Commission at most supervised by a multi-party committee of elected lawmakers. Home Minister Muhyiddin Khan Alomgir has alleged that BNP senior vice chairperson Tariq Rahman breached his bond undertaking by hosting a political meeting in London recently. He said Tariq was able to go abroad on condition that he will not get involved in active politics. Alamgir said this to reporters after inaugurating four police stations in Chittagong City on Thursday. He said that the eldest son of the BNP chairperson Khalid Azir would be brought back to the country to face prosecution on charges of flouting the bond and other ongoing charges. He said Tariq was allowed to go abroad on the bond condition even though the then caretaker government had agreed that he was a criminal. Tariq has 20 cases pending against him. Among them is a money laundering case for which a Dhaka court ordered his arrest, saying it will seek help from Interpol to hold the BNP leader from London to face trial. Tariq currently lives in London. He was arrested during the last caretaker regime, and in 2008 he was granted bail and went to London with his family. He stayed there ostensibly for medical reasons. After keeping a low profile for some time, he was back in the headlines. This time it was for campaigning at a function in East London on the 20th of May. During this, his first public appearance in almost five years, he called for a caretaker administration for the forthcoming parliamentary polls. While numerous stories have been circulating regarding the match-fixing scandal, one of the most important yet unresolved questions is what Mohammed Ashraful actually confessed to the Anti-Corruption and Security Unit, or AXU officials, who recently visited the country to investigate the alleged match-fixing in the last Bangladesh Premier League, the BPL. On Friday, a source who was involved in the AXU investigation and aided the team during the interrogation process revealed the details of the AXU investigation and the admission of Mohammed Ashraful. In 2013, the AXU sent some of their officials to Bangladesh. The team met with some local and foreign cricketers to make inquiries about suspicious activity relating to some matches. The AXU's main doubts surrounded the Dhaka Gladiators matches on February 2nd, February 12th and February 14th. According to their information, the fate of these three matches had been decided either by match fixing or spot fixing before a ball had even been bowled. Some cricket players were involved. During the interrogation, many fingers were raised towards the performance of some players in these three particular matches, said the source. According to Ashraful's statement to the AXU, before the start of the 2013 Bangladesh Premier League, Salim Chowdhury invited Ashraful to his office and told him that they would have to lose some matches in this year's competition. He likened the situation to how the Kolkata Knight Riders had earned crores of rupees by throwing away the matches in the Indian Premier League. In a rare move on Thursday, a Dhaka court granted bail to Hifajat Islam Secretary General Junaid Babunogri in all the three cases filed against him, including one for killing a police officer. Usually, a lower court does not grant bail in a murder case. The Fajat leader had earlier made a confessional statement before a magistrate in the case of killing sub-inspector of police Muhammad Shah Jahan on the 5th of May at Shapla Shatar in the capital. Babu Nogri was shifted to Burdam Hospital from Dhaka Central Jail for treatment. He underwent an operation on his leg and is now doing fine, hospital sources say. The superintendent of the Central Jail, Muhammad Farman Ali, said that police guard for Babu Nogri at the hospital was withdrawn around 3.30pm 
Earlier, during the hearing of Babu Nagri's bail petition, his counsel told the court that the Hifajat leader had been inhumanely tortured while on remand and thus had taken ill and is fighting for his life at the hospital. The prosecution did not oppose the bail petitions. Apart from the case of the killing of the police officer, two other cases were filed on charges of vandalism, torching and damaging public property, vehicles and attacking police. Babu Nogri is the prime accused in 16 cases relating to the 5th of May mayhem. He was arrested on the 6th of May and was placed on a 13-day remand the following day. Subsequently, he was remanded for 22 days in the three cases. The main opposition government in Bangladesh, the BNP, celebrated the 32nd anniversary of the death of the founder of the party, late President Ziaur Rahman. To observe the day, the BNP and its associated bodies have chalked out a 10-day programme which includes discussions, blood donations and free medical treatment. General Ziaur Rahman, Bangladesh's first military ruler, rose to power on the 7th of November 1975 following the coup of mid-August and the counter-coup which took place on November 3rd. In April 1977, he took over as president from Justice ASM Sayem, who had been installed in office by General Khalid Musharraf on the 6th of November 1975 and was kept on by the new military leadership. Zia organized presidential elections in June 1978, in which he defeated General MAG Osmani, the candidate of the combined opposition. In the same year, he founded the BNP. On his watch, general elections in early 1979 gave his new party a majority in parliament. Zia was assassinated in 1981 in an abortive coup at the Chittagong Circuit House. That concludes our roundup of the top stories for this week. Thank you for watching. Please join me again at the same time next week. Allah Hafiz.